Hello, in this episode of Cool Grad Videos, we're going to talk about a very important topic that is funding. So, most students who are applying to grad schools and PhD programs abroad are concerned about financial support from the university. And it's a very important decision for a lot of students. They decide which university to attend based on whether they offer funding or not. And they have all these questions in their mind about uh, whom to approach for funding, what are the different types of funding, what about research assistantship, teaching assistantship. They don't really know much about these things. So, in this video, we'll give you a wealth of advice about funding. What is funding? Funding is any kind of financial support provided by the university. So, the university can give you some amount of money basically. It could be like a tuition waiver, so where you don't have to you know, pay any tuition fees, or it could be a partial tuition waiver, like 25%, 50%, 75%. So, if the tuition for the entire MBA program, for example, is $60,000, they might give you a 100% tuition waiver, in which case you don't have to pay any tuition. But you'll still have to pay a lot of money for purchasing textbooks, and uh, for your living expenses, and for your health insurance, and things like that. So, um, some people might also get a, a graduate teaching assistantship, or a graduate research assistantship, in addition to waiver. So, that means that these people uh, will be working on campus for a few hours every week, and then they can uh, use that money for their living expenses or for their uh, textbooks and all these, you know, supplies. So, so uh, funding might also be in the form of a scholarship, which is something they give you as a monetary compensation, which you don't have to repay them. It's uh, kind of like a tuition waiver, but it also might be for a specific research project. And there's also something called a fellowship which is like a grant given for a particular research project. So, basically there are two important components of funding. One is whether you have to pay tuition to the university or you get a tuition waiver or a scholarship, something wherein you don't have to pay for tuition. Remember that graduate education abroad is quite expensive. It can cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars per credit to a few thousand dollars per credit. And for like a master's program, you would need about anywhere from say, uh, 28 to about 35 credits, at least, to graduate. So these programs run into tens of thousands of dollars. So, um, for example, most PhD students, they get a complete tuition waiver, most of them. They are funded by the university. And they also have to work for the university department for about 20 hours a week. Either they do some kind of research, or they teach some kind of undergraduate or graduate level courses, or they do some grading. They do some work, and for that work they get like a stipend. Like they may get anywhere from about $1,500 to $3,000 a month, usually. Uh, and this is the year 2016, I'm talking about like America. And in also other countries, they might get, like say in Europe, somewhere between 1,000 to 3,000 euros per month. So as PhD students, but as master students, uh, you get paid a little less usually. So, suppose you get a complete scholarship and also teaching assistantship for a master's in computer science program. So, a master's student could be making somewhere like around, uh, depending on whether you work 10 hours or 20 hours a week, assuming you're working 20 hours a week for the department as a teaching assistant or a grader. So, a master's student might be making anywhere between, you know, $700 a month to $1,500 a month or a little more, usually, as of the year 2016. So, the monthly stipend is more than enough to meet living expenses and health insurance and all these costs. And if you have complete funding, then you don't have to pay for health insurance. Usually, the university gives you health insurance. But if you have no funding, you have to pay for your own health insurance, and that can be quite expensive. And, um, like for example, when I was doing my MBA, I had a complete scholarship in the University of Arizona and also a graduate teaching assistantship. So I would work for only 10 hours a week because that's all they offered me. I mean, for 10 hours a week I would be doing some easy work like grading or proctoring exams or, you know, teaching some courses. It was different each semester or helping with the admissions process and I would um, get a stipend of about $470 a month. This was like a long back, like I graduated in 2011. So. Uh, I didn't have to pay any tuition at all, but in spite of that, it cost me about um, seven to eight thousand dollars. Even though I had complete scholarship and 
graduate teaching assistantship because for some things like the international students fee you still have to pay that about 70 to 100 dollars per annum and then you know for my groceries and stuff um, I would use you know my dad's credit card once in a while and um, sometimes uh, there is something called an acceptance fee like when somebody makes you an offer of admission in the university so you have to either accept it or decline it and if you accept it you have to pay five hundred dollars as confirmation that you're going to join the program so I had to pay that and in an MBA program the textbooks mainly are so goddamn expensive so each textbook cost about hundred dollars and hundred and twenty dollars sometimes at least fifty dollars so and each semester we had to purchase about at least four or five textbooks so most of my expenditure in my MBA was for my textbooks so these are expenses and then you have to purchase your ticket to go abroad and you know all these things I still ended up spending about at least seven to eight thousand dollars even though I had complete scholarship and graduate teaching assistantship so funding is a very important factor and I'm going to give you tips about how to approach the professors in the right way to get funding so full versus partial funding so complete funding means you don't have to pay anything plus they also give you a job on the campus like a teaching assistantship or a research assistantship so you do some work and you also get a monthly stipend a salary so essentially you don't have to ask your parents for or anybody else for financial support so that's uh, kind of cool but be prepared for you know unexpected expenses so that's uh, full funding but um, if you get partial funding, like you get 50% tuition fee waiver, you still have to pay the remaining 50%. Or uh, sometimes there is something called you know, in-state tuition and out-of-state tuition. So for international students, it's a whole different uh, cost structure. But sometimes a, a university may say you just pay the in-state tuition, even though you're out-of-state and the remaining amount will be given to you as scholarship or something, or as a tuition waiver. So. Some students get full funding and some get partial funding, mainly depending on your GPA, your GRE or GMAT exam scores, and uh, you know, depending on your statement of purpose, recommendation letters, and all these factors. So what is a research assistantship? Basically, it's given to you by a professor, a lecturer at the university, and um, you do some research in a particular subject and help him publish some papers, or you, you know, perform some experiments for the professor and uh, show him the results. Uh, run some statistical analysis for him or you know uh, edit his papers grade his uh, exams with students you can do different things you know research assistantship is basically a graduate student getting paid to do his own research so you do your own research which is part of a professor's bigger research project you do your research to help the professor in his research and you get paid for it and that's kind of actually cool it's every graduate student's dream to get an RA or research assistantship okay a teaching assistantship. It requires you to work for about 10 or 20 hours on campus as a teaching assistant, meaning you teach undergraduate or graduate courses, mostly undergraduate courses. And for 20 hours a week, so maybe a course in Java or a course in economics or in uh, mergers and acquisitions or in marketing, whatever. I mean, you could be allotted to various uh, you know, professors within the department. For example, if you're in an MBA program, you might be asked to teach an undergraduate course in economics. I was a teaching assistant for an economics 101 course, in fact, and I was grading their exams. So you might be asked to help with the economics department or the finance department or the HR department or the marketing department or the entrepreneurship department, any professor. And it's not rocket science. These are undergraduate level courses and a graduate student is expected to be competent enough to be able to understand and learn and grade these courses and also teach a few of these courses. But for teaching, usually they um, appoint people who have, you know, who have a background in that subject. Like for example, if you're in the computer science department and if you have already learned Java in your undergrad, you have a background in it, they might ask you to teach the Java 101 course or the 201 course or in um, C++ or uh, you know, database management. They usually have these grad students uh, teach these undergraduate courses and also grade them. Sometimes you might have only a grading job for 20 hours a week if they have a big class with a lot of exams and stuff. And sometimes you might have to hold uh, office hours, you know. 
So you grade exams whenever there are exams, and when there is no exams, you just hold office hours. So you sit in the office for like um, 20 hours a week, or like you know 10 hours a week. You just have to sit there, and if any students come to you with any doubts, you have to explain things to them, or you know do your research and solve their problems. Or if they have problems with their homework, they come to you. So this is like uh, teaching assistantship. Usually. Graduate students really love an RA job because they just do their research and you know they don't have to deal with undergrad kids and students and grading and then the students sometimes complain to their professors saying you know this teaching assistant is not grading properly, he is not grading my courses properly and things like that. Research is like the professor gives you some work, you do your own research and help them and you get paid. That seems easier. Most graduate students always try to get research assistantships. That's something they really crave for. So if you have a TA job, make sure you grade fairly and never ever take bribes or something like that to you know, give them better grades and never discriminate against any student for whatever reason. And honesty and diplomacy are very important and you must also have good communication skills. Sometimes even though you're very competent in English, you may not be able to understand what the students are saying, in which case it becomes a slight problem unless you put in an effort to you tell them to talk slowly and tell them to try and understand what they are saying and help grade their courses, things like that. Scholarship. What is a scholarship? A scholarship is essentially a financial award given to a student. It's money that you don't have to repay. Sometimes, well, it's given to students who, have, uh, who demonstrate a promise of graduating successfully. It might also be based on academic achievements and also uh, could be based on uh, financial needs. For various reasons, they can give you a scholarship. And sometimes there's a catch, like, you know, within, for example, they give you a scholarship for um, a JD program. JD is a law program, right? So they give you a complete scholarship. But the catch might be that within uh, four years after that, you start practicing law. Or um, within two years after that, you enroll for a PhD program in law. And Otherwise, you have to repay the entire amount. There may be a catch sometimes. And sometimes there's like a paid forward kind of thing. So they don't really have a catch. Like there's one university in, um, I think, uh, Cleveland, Ohio, where they give you complete scholarship for medical school. You know, med school can cost you easily a quarter million dollars, but they give you complete uh, scholarship and there's no catch. It's only, a, you know, like paid forward. So they go on and uh, help other needy students. They just feel, you know, kind of morally obligated. And they sometimes uh, return it to their alma mater to help other needy students. Sometimes there's no catch and sometimes there may be a catch. I remember this interesting program at the, I think it was the Booth University in um, Chicago, where they had this interesting uh, dual degree program for JD, PhD. So you could do a JD, the law degree, and you could simultaneously be doing a PhD, like in economics or particle physics or philosophy or something. A totally different program. So you do a JD PhD together for about six years. And at the end of it, uh, you graduate. But there was a catch. So within four years, you had to become like an assistant professor in the law school. Else you had to repay the amount that they gave you for the uh, JD scholarship. So there's sometimes uh, these catches. So always ask the university if there's any catch and if they expect anything in return. But usually, you never have to pay to get a scholarship. I mean, they give you money either on a certain condition. Of course, one of the condition is always that you graduate from the program successfully and with honesty. But in addition to that, sometimes there may be a condition or maybe not. So make sure you get all the details right. Scholarships do not have to be repaid. But as I said, there might be other ways in which they might pressure you to do certain things because they gave you a scholarship. Do I have to pay for scholarship? You never have to pay for a scholarship. If somebody is asking you to pay for a scholarship, you are most probably the victim of a scholarship scam. So check out this website, um, ftc.gov, you know, scholarship scams. So they tell you, you know, uh, they try to pretend that they're from this university and, you know, from this um, trust or some charitable organization and they send you all these things and they say we're going to give you the scholarship and everything is signed and you believe them and then they say you got to deposit just five hundred dollars and we'll repay it to you within six months or repay it to you the moment you start the program or something like that 
So the, those are scams, okay? For a scholarship, you never have to pay. But a university may ask you to pay like $500 as a deposit to confirm your offer of admission. So that is okay, that's not a scam. So you can just try and see the different types of scams that are running out there. So be very careful. So um, uh, you may have to maintain a certain GPA when they give you a scholarship. Like it might be a teaching assistantship, a research assistantship, or just a tuition fee waiver, any kind of scholarship, any kind of funding from the university. One of the criteria for you to continue and retain the funding is that you maintain the minimum GPA, which is usually 3.0, meaning you have to have either a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or a B grade in every course, which is, you know, amounts to 3.0 GPA. In some universities, the moment you get anything less than a B grade in even one course, they just stop terminate your funding. And in some universities, if your cumulative GPA is 3.0, it's okay, they don't care. So you have to be very careful about these things. And it might be better for you to go to a university where they care more about the cumulative GPA rather than each individual course. Because you never know, there could be a variety of reasons why you, know, you might end up getting less than a B grade in a particular course. So it can happen to anyone. I've seen some of the most brilliant students sometimes screw up a particular exam because they didn't have enough sleep or whatever reason and they get like maybe a BC grade in one particular course even though they had like A grades in all the other courses. It can happen sometimes. It happens to it can happen to anyone. So, um, uh, where does the scholarship money come from? It can come from a variety of sources. It can come from a university fund, or from a government organization, or from like the National Science Foundation, or uh, you know from any corporations or any charitable organizations. Or they might be come. They come from the wills of philanthropists. So like. Um, a lot of rich people, when they die, they give scholarships. For example, the Rhodes Scholarship is a very prestigious scholarship in the world, and it's named after the diamond baron and fervent colonialist, uh, Cecil Rhodes, who founded Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe. So, so this guy, uh, Rhodes, had a lot of money, and when he died, he wrote a bill that said, um, he created a trust that pays for a select group of exceptional students to study in the University of Oxford in England every year. So some of the famous people who've held Rhodes Scholarship um, have you know, become world famous celebrities. Bill Clinton used to have a Rhodes Scholarship. There are so many such scholarships. You might have also heard of um, Dr. Ben Carson, who uh, was a famous surgeon uh, who, you know, at the uh, Johns Hopkins University, I guess, in Maryland. And uh, he came up the hard way, you know, from a uh, he came from a very poor family and he came up the really hard way. There's a documentary about him. I watched it on Netflix. And uh, so this guy has now instituted a trust which provides scholarships to other needy students. So there are a lot of rich people out there willing to give scholarships. Fellowships are grants given to individuals, research groups, or universities for a particular study or project. So how is a scholarship different from a fellowship? A fellowship is usually given for a particular project or a particular research or, you know, it's kind of similar to scholarship, but a scholarship might be just given to you because you're in financial need, you come from a poor family, or maybe because you're brilliant and there's a scholarship to support you, or it might be a scholarship given for a, a, a different reasons, but a fellowship is usually for a particular research project or a particular academic project, usually, I'm just saying. and. Um, Fellowships also include nationally competitive scholarships, grants, and funds, and uh, th there's some kind of uh, overlap in these terminologies. So when to discuss funding? So sometimes universities offer funding along with an offer of admission. So if you're applying to like the University of Maryland College Park, they may say, uh, we are pleased to offer you admission to the Department of Computer Science. And we also give you complete uh, scholarship and a graduate teaching assistantship. Hey, that's cool. And sometimes they might uh, give you an offer of admission and say, we're considering you for funding, we can make that decision only after a month. And sometimes, like say in the George Washington University, they usually don't give funding to any master's students at the time of admission. At least it's the way it used to be. And you have to go there for, and study there for one semester and prove yourself in that university. And only from the second semester they give funding to 
select master students. That's just the university department policy. So it varies from university to university and even within the university, it depends on each department. So look up the university department websites and talk to your senior students at the university to understand the funding situation. So you can discuss funding with your professors while applying. You can talk to them over phone and by emails and ask them what the funding situation is. If your research interests align with their research interests, you can ask them about funding. But it's uh, never a good idea to demand. So you can also discuss funding with your professors after you arrive at the university. So when not to discuss funding. So never discuss funding when applying to a program in any of your documents. Like in your statement of purpose, watch my video about the statement of purpose and I elaborate on this. Don't demand funding. The university is doing you an a favor by offering you admission. You never demand funding from the university in your statement of purpose. You cannot make statements like, I can only take up this program only if I get financial funding or else I, I cannot or else I'm going to some other university. That's not the way it works. It actually weighs your application down. So, uh, you must not uh, mention any of your documents about your financial uh, needs or your financial crisis or poverty or situation. And you, you, it's never a good idea to emotionally blackmail them, talking to your professor saying, you know, I come from a poor family, I really need this, I want to do this. That's not a good idea. Talk to them about your interest in their research and how you can be an asset in their program and their individual research and that's a surefire way to you know try and get funding. You can talk to the professors at the time of applying and also after you land at the university. The sooner you approach them the better. Every professor you can talk to them about funding. I mean usually not in the first call but it's okay. But if you write in the university saying I can take this up only if I get funding then it's not a good idea. It's going to work against you. Align with the professor's interests. So convince the professor that your primary focus is to help him succeed in his research. These people have big research projects that they're working on and graduate students are really junior in the academic world. And if you're going to be an asset in his research, help him get where he wants, then he's definitely going to probably take you in his team and give you funding. But if you have your own interests and your own goals which are not aligned with his, he might just dump you, even after he has offered you funding. I have known students who, um, like for example, wanted to work in uh, artificial intelligence with a certain professor and then the professor was excited and they had a good chemistry and uh, it was all going great. But after one semester, the student says, you know what, I want to work in artificial intelligence but also apply it to like sensor networks in the um, electrical industry or I want to work on like um, something artificial intelligence applied to mechanical uh, uh, devices like cars or something like that on some particular project that the student has developed a very strong interest in and maybe the professor is not interested in that particular field before you talk about your interest your professor think whether he's going to be happy about it or not I have known situations wherein a student went to a professor and said you know I'm interested in this other research project and the professor just dumped him saying if you're interested in it just go don't waste my time because the professors have well-defined goals for themselves. They just want people who will be asset in their own research. Sometimes if your research interests are not aligned with the professors, he can just dump you. He doesn't have to give you a reason. So whom to approach for funding? Approach all the professors that you're interested to work with and talk to them about being interested in their field of study and research. It's okay to talk about funding opportunities in your first meeting too, but as long as you're not making a nuisance of yourself. And talk to your senior students at the university. They are really the best source of advice and guidance for you. They know which professors are likely to get funding and what is the situation going on and whom to approach and uh, which professor is cranky, which professor is good, uh, which guy is good to work with, which guy is not. Uh, they can give you a wealth of advice. Your seniors are your best you know, sources of advice. So remember there's a fine line between being persistent and annoying. So don't make a nuisance of yourself, you know, begging for funding all the time. So, um, uh, don't work for a professor just for funding. So suppose you're in the computer science department and your interest really lies in a few subjects like, you know, artificial intelligence, database management, compilers and these things. But suppose there's a professor who works in computer graphics 
and he's um, a famous professor, all right. His research is interesting, all right. But it doesn't interest you. You and he has some fun. And suppose you approach the professor and take up the computer graphics projects and research just because you want funding. You may not be able to pretend and keep up that interest for a long time. The professor might see your lack of interest. He might see through your pretense. And after a while, you get frustrated, the professor gets frustrated, and it might end up in a disaster.